the 12th of March, 1938. German troops cross the border with Austria and invade the country without firing a single shot. They are not met with armed resistance, but with cheers and flowers. While thousands of Austrians turn out to greet Adolf Hitler as he travels first to Linz and then on to Vienna, terrified Jews, leftists, and other opponents of the Nazi regime race towards the country's borders, hoping to reach them before they are closed, but most would become trapped in a rapidly Nazifying Austria. In the weeks that follow, there is pogrom-like violence across the country. Austrian Nazis and others beat up, attack, and humiliate the Jews. They force them to scrub the streets, clean public toilets, and perform humiliating exercises. Many decide to try to leave Austria, and lines appear at consulates across the city of Vienna. However, not all Austrians support the Nazis, and those who dare to criticize the regime will often pay the ultimate price for their defiance of the Führer. One of them is a Roman Catholic priest, Karl Lampert. Karl Lampert, the youngest of seven children, was born on the 9th of January, 1894 in Feldkirch, then part of Austria-Hungary. He attended school in his hometown and later pursued studies at his state high school. However, when his father passed away, it seemed his education might be at risk. Fortunately, his uncle stepped in, providing the financial support Lampert needed to continue his studies without interruption. In 1914, Lampert began his training for the priesthood in Brixen and was ordained by Bishop Franz Egger in May 1918. He celebrated his first Mass later that same month. After becoming a priest, Lampert served as a chaplain in the city of Dornbirn, where he focused on working with young people. In 1930, with financial support from Bishop Sigismund Weitz, he moved to Rome to study canon law. When Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany in January 1933, he fully intended to bring about an Austro-German Union. However, Germany was not immediately militarily and diplomatically ready to carry out Hitler's foreign policy goals. First, Hitler and other Nazi leaders focused on establishing a Nazi dictatorship. However, behind the scenes, the Nazi leadership began planning territorial expansion and a European war almost as soon as they took power. Beginning in May 1933, the Austrian Nazis waged a propaganda and terror campaign, which was encouraged and funded by Germany. The Nazi goal was to undermine the regime of the Austrian Chancellor, Engelbert Dollfuss, by making it look incompetent. They staged disruptive protests and brawled with political opponents and the police. Austrian Nazis set off explosives and tear gas bombs in public places and Jewish-owned businesses. In March 1938, Hitler threatened an invasion and ordered Wilhelm Keitel to conduct military maneuvers near the Austrian border to make it appear an invasion was imminent. Dolphus' successor, Austrian Chancellor Kurt Schuschnigg, resigned from his office on the 11th of March, and Austrian Nazis took over the country without firing a single shot. The Anschluss, as it became known, took place over three days between the 11th and 13th of March, 1938. The Nazis then launched a crusade against the church and confiscated property, closed Catholic organizations, and sent many priests to Dachau. Anger at the treatment of the church in Austria grew quickly, and in October 1938, the first act of overt mass resistance to the new regime took place. A rally of thousands left mass in Vienna, chanting, Christ is our Führer, before being dispersed by police. After Cardinal Theodor Initzer denounced Nazi persecution of the church, a Nazi mob ransacked his residence. By the time of the Anschluss, Lampert had already been appointed Monsignor and was serving at the Diocese of Innsbruck, where Bishop Weitz had assigned him several administrative duties. During this period, Lampert was regarded as a potential new bishop for the diocese, yet Pius XI did not select him. Instead, in January 1939, he was appointed pro-vicar of the diocese. In 1940, Lampert made unsuccessful efforts to secure the release of Otto Neururer, an Austrian Roman Catholic priest and staunch anti-Nazi. After Neuruder died after 36 hours of torture in May 1940 in the Buchenwald concentration camp, 
The Nazi sent his ashes to Goetzen's, where he had served as a pastor, with the intention of burying them anonymously. However, when Lampert published an obituary in a church newsletter, which also stated Neuruda's place of death, he was arrested in July 1940 for violating Nazi confidentiality laws. In August 1940, he was deported to Dachau, and in September of the same year to Sachsenhausen, where he had to perform hard physical labor. During his time there, Lampert often repeated a popular saying, in the name of Christ for the church. Later, in December 1940, he was transferred back to Dachau, where he remained for eight months before being released in August 1941 and sent to Stettin, today's Polish Chechen. Whilst at Stettin, Lampert worked as a pastor and chaplain in a hospital. Despite his release, he remained under intense surveillance and was viewed with suspicion. His phone calls were monitored and all correspondence was scrutinized. Without his knowledge, the Gestapo, the Nazi secret police, had planted a spy on Lampant, operating under the false identity of engineer Georg Hagen. He presented himself as an opponent of the Nazis and a deeply religious individual seeking spiritual enlightenment. Through Bible study sessions and discussions, Hagen gained Lampert's trust. However, Hagen was actually named Franz Pisarich, who sought to join the Waffen-SS, the military arm of the SS. Despite Pisarich's persistent efforts to extract incriminating statements, Lampert maintained a steadfast silence against the Nazi regime. After months of spying without finding solid evidence, Pisarich devised a plan, falsely accusing Lampert of listening to enemy radio broadcasts and sabotaging the war effort with his words. This led to Lampert's arrest in February 1943, where he was accused of high treason, particularly undermining army morale and aiding the enemy, and endured intense interrogations and torture. Despite the ordeal, Lampert stayed strong in his faith, and his spirit remained unbroken. During questioning, the interrogator asked Lampert which he valued more, the Gospel or Hitler's Mein Kampf. Lampert replied, the gospel is the word of God and proclaims love. The book of Mr. Hitler is the work of a man and preaches hatred. The trial against Lampert and two other priests, Father Friedrich Lorenz and Chaplain Herbert Simolait, was opened in December 1943 before the Reich military court in Halle. Even in court, the SS man Pisarich appeared under his false name engineer Hagen to strengthen the prosecution's case with his testimony. Lampard was found guilty in December 1943. Due to internal disputes within the court, some judges advocated for the death penalty, while others argued for a long prison sentence due to Lampard's faith. As a result, the death sentence was not signed. In January 1944, the trial was delegated to the Reich Military Court in Torgau, where Lampard was deported. He spent almost seven months in solitary confinement. The verdict reached Halle. The death sentence was confirmed in July 1944 in all respects. On the night before General Staff Judge Werner Lubin had to sign the verdict, he committed suicide on the morning of the 28th of July 1944. One of his last statements was, In this case, we are dealing neither with criminals nor with antisocial elements. Their only tragedy is that they are Catholic priests. With new judges, a third trial against Lampard took place, where he was sentenced to death again in September 1944. Karl Lampard was 50 years old when he was executed by guillotine at 4 p.m. on the 13th of November 1944 at the Rother Ochse prison in Halle. His remains were cremated and buried in Halle and were returned to his hometown in 1948. Exactly 67 years after his death, on the 13th of November 2011, Karl Lampert was officially beatified. The ceremony took place at St. Martin's Parish Church in Dornburn, Austria, where Lampert began his priesthood as a young chaplain. Cardinal Angelo Amato led the ceremony on behalf of Pope Benedict XVI, who had approved the beatification earlier that year. This tribute honors Karl Lampert's brave stand against the Nazis, serving as a lasting reminder to future generations of the power of conviction and belief against tyranny. There were many tears shed for Karl Lampert.
Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.